Do you find yourself drowning in emails? I don't know about you, but I get an awful lot of email. And before using ClickUp and its email feature, I was constantly either copying and pasting information from emails, emailing myself in hopes that I would surface that email back to the top again, using features in emails that I thought would help me find them again, like favoriting them or putting them into folders, but I always found myself drowning in email. Then I discovered ClickUp's feature that enables you to send emails to a specific list or even a task right inside of ClickUp. And you can leverage ClickUp's automation tool to help do some behind the scenes tidying up for you so that later that email will be surfaced as an email that you need to tag so that you can appropriately find it later. This video is gonna walk you through all of the steps to do this in under 15 minutes. Hello, my name is Dr. Monica Rishabi. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm a former high school teacher, college professor, and higher ed administrator. I now run operations for an online education startup. I want you to stop and think about all the email you receive on a daily basis. Just stop and think about it for a moment. You probably get a fair amount of emails from students, despite maybe having asked students to only message you within the learning management system, the LMS. You probably get a fair amount of emails from administrators and academic colleagues. And I bet you get even the occasional email for, can you please write me a recommendation letter? I don't know about you, but I love writing recommendation letters, but I always find that I'm somehow writing them at the last moment, despite best laid plans to give myself plenty of time to do them in advance. So my point being is we get a lot of emails, don't we? There's just a lot of emails that you have to deal with. But what if there was a better way to deal with emails? What if there was a better way to get the emails out of your email inbox and out of the other ways you might have been handling your emails? So there's all kinds of ways to handle your email. Here's some of the three that I have often used. First, the feature that I really don't like to use and I will admit I use way too much, favoriting or starring emails, especially if you're using Gmail as a client. Google gives you the option to star or favorite emails, but then when you favorite everything, some things aren't really so special or favorited anymore, are they? It's just, it's not another way, it, it becomes another way to not let you find something that's important because everything is important, everything is starred. Or what about digital folders? I have way too many subfolders in my inbox. Now I have cured myself of that and I'm gonna to talk to you today about how I've done that. But I used to have so many folders, I, I would even try to organize it um, into subfolders of folders. So, and then it became like academic year. So for example, 2020 to 2021, and then within that the semester and within that the quarter or the class, you probably see where I'm going with this. It was a lot of folders. And then I simply couldn't find anything because it was visually hidden away. So it looked a lot tidier but it wasn't helpful when it came to working with my email. And then those physical paper file folders, I have that image here on the screen on the right, because I occasionally, I will admit, even printed emails. Back when I used to have a paper filing system that I kept pretty up to date with my classwork. Um, I'd have students in classes and I would keep everything grouped by folders and sometimes would even occasionally print out emails if there were things that I thought I needed to keep later on. So those were kind of the three methods I was using. I was favoriting things, I was using digital folders, and occasionally I was also even printing emails. So today I'm going to teach you how you can take emails out of your email inbox where you might have been organizing them or not organizing them with one of the methods I just talked about. Maybe it's a digital folder, maybe you're printing them, or maybe you're using or overusing the favorite or star feature, just like I used to. ClickUp offers a really unique feature that I haven't seen in very many project management tools. I think I've seen it in one or two other tools and I haven't seen it work consistently as well as it does in ClickUp. And that's saying something because I, as I lovingly like to say about ClickUp with my friends, family, and colleagues, ClickUp's janky sometimes. Things don't always work the way you would expect. And if it doesn't work quite right, hit Command R for Mac or Control R on a PC and refresh and then it will probably work properly. Now, the point I'm making here though is that it tends to work right with this particular feature, which is send emails to ClickUp. So you can take emails in any email client that you have, Gmail, Outlook, whatever you use, and you can forward that email to any list or task within ClickUp. So ClickUp has this unique feature where they make it available that you can send things directly to a list. So if you click on the three dot menu next to any list, like you can see here on the screen, I'll choose email to list and you'll see this special email. Now, normally I would blur this out, but it's a test account, so I'll blur it later if I need to. 
but all you'd have to do is choose copy and then you can forward to this email. Now it is a really long email address and actually I should probably follow my own technical advice and reset the email after I do this. But you would just copy this email and you can simply put it into the CC, BCC or hit forward on your email and send it to this particular list. Now let's take a look at what happens when you do that. So I'm gonna copy this email and then I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna come back over and show you what happens next. So I'm over here in Chrome and I'm using an email I don't often use for demos. But the reason I'm using this is I wanted one that would give me just a really basic email client and there's an HTML option for slower internet connections with Gmail. So that's what you're seeing right now, an email account that I use for typically newsletters. Um, it's my university alumni account. So what I'm going to do is just paste in the ClickUp email address. So notice that really long email from the list I just grabbed. And I'm just gonna go down to the subject and I'm gonna put a sample test subject in here. So like test message from Google. It's from my Penn State University account, so I'll put it here. And then I'll put some additional test details. And again, the reason I'm doing this is because I want you to see where these fields go when I send this to ClickUp. So, I'm going to go ahead and send this and then I'll pop back over to ClickUp and show you what happens when we get it. it. Usually takes less than a minute. Okay, we're back in ClickUp. What I did while I was paused was I just went ahead and took the filter off in ClickUp and made it so that it wasn't just the items that had a class. And so you'll see some other items that are here that don't have a class assigned, including this test message from Google PSU. So let's open that up and take a look at what's inside. So we can see the email address I used to send it to. So that's just included inside of the message. Um, the test message from Google PSU was the subject, I believe. And then there's some additional test details was just what I wrote inside of the message. Um, and I can see that this created the task. So that was my email and it created it. And it just added this task directly here. Now, this isn't the most exciting demo. So let's look at something that's a little bit more interesting. Let me see if I can find a newsletter to forward so you can see what that looks like. Okay, I found something much more interesting to show you. So I belong to a group called Pod Network, or at least I belong to their mailing list. And it has um, all sorts of posts from faculty educators and faculty developers, and they usually have pretty lively discussions. And sometimes I'll see messages on the listserv that I wanna take a look at later. And if I don't find some way to send it to myself to look at it later, I will forget to look at it. So I just forwarded one of those recent messages from my inbox over to this ClickUp list. So you'll see it gives you some information in it, just like the other one did before. Um, this time there's some more information about the fact that the summary, and again, this is not done by ClickUp. This is just the text content of the email. So I can scroll through and see all of the posts that were inside of this summary email for the pod network discussion group. So this just gives you an idea of when you're first getting started with emails with ClickUp, when you forward something to a list. And again, we grabbed that email by clicking the three dot menu next to the list and then going to email to list, and then going ahead to copy that. And if for any reason, like if you're doing a demo, such as I am doing right now, you need to change that email because you don't wanna have your list get filled up with all sorts of emails coming from other folks, you can reset that email address if you need to. So we've taken a look at the first step, which is just how to find the email address for the list. Next, let's talk about how to do something a little bit more advanced, which is how can you forward particular emails to your list and maybe assign them to something in particular or give you a way of easily finding how to assign them. So I'll talk about that in the next part of this video. So when you start emailing things to ClickUp, you may find that it can become pretty overloaded fairly quickly. What I mean to say is if you're forwarding things left and right, especially if you have a shortcut for this email address for the list. So if you just grab the email for let's say your tasks list and you are constantly forwarding things to ClickUp, you're gonna find you have lots of empty tasks that aren't grouped with anything. They're not with a particular class. They're not arranged for a scholarship activity or some type, of, some type of service committee. It just gets very disorganized. So here's how you can help get ahead of the disorganization that I personally know will come if you don't think about this in advance. You can use ClickUp's automation feature to tag content that you email to this list with a special tag called email. And then you can set up a filter to help remind yourself to, let's say, organize and tag those particular emails appropriately so you can find them later. So in order to add the automation, all you have to do is click automate in the upper right hand corner. And if you click the arrow, you'll see that there are some choices. I want to simply click the automate button because I'm going to bring up this add automation button. 
once I click that, when it says the first thing, when this happens, instead of status changes, I want it to simply be task created. So when a task is created, now I want everything to be turned off except for the email. So when the task is created by email, because I'm saying, okay, if, if I get a task on here that was created because I emailed to it, I want something to happen. So what I want to have happen is I want the task to be tagged. So I'm going to change the tags and I'm going to add a tag of email. So that's all you have to do when task is created by email. So I turn everything else off. I want to tag that particular task as email. And let me go ahead and click create here. Now, over time, if you have lots of automations, you may find that it's helpful to add descriptions. If you hover on top of it, like I'm doing now, you can add a description. So for example, automation to tag anything I email to this list as email. And that just gives you a little bit more information if you look at it later and you're trying to think about what's that automation do. So I've made the automation and now notice next to the automate button, it has a little parentheses and a one. That means there's one automation on this list. If I click it again, I can see the automation again and I can make changes by clicking the pencil. So next, let's try this again. So I'm gonna send another email and let's watch it um, in real time, hopefully, automate and add the email tag. So I'm gonna go send that email and I'll be right back. Okay, I sent the email, I'm back inside of ClickUp and I'm going to refresh my screen and see if the tag gets applied. So right now I can't see any new emails. So I'm gonna do Command R on my keyboard and see if it comes in. So let's watch it load. Test email for automation. Yep, it applied the email tag. And again, that's because I created the email tag or the automation that said anything that comes in via email, I want the tag to be applied. And if I click on this email I sent, I just had put in the body was the email tag applied. And notice it says ClickBot, which is the name of what ClickUp calls its automation bot, applied the tag email. So now I have the email tag applied. You might recall that earlier I mentioned that when you start sending emails to ClickUp, they can add up or pile up pretty quickly if you don't have a system in place for yourself to help you review the emails that you're sending like these to ClickUp on a regular basis. So as I've said in other videos, the way I like to sort out this sort of problem is to create a view for myself to have ClickUp surface for me information that I'm sending and that automation has tagged as email. So I have a tagging table view that I created, and this is just a table view. And that table view is set up so that the tag is set to email. So this means that whenever I go to this tasks list and I look at the tagging view, I will only see tasks on here that were tagged with email with that click bot automation that we made earlier. So I've already applied the tag of class to this, but the way it came in is it simply looked like this. And I can now go ahead and tag as however I would like. Maybe it also relates to a service activity and maybe this also has something to do with a research project. But now I have automatically, or not almost automatically, put myself into a process where I can regularly review and take a look at things so that I can make sure I'm tagging them and I can appropriately find them later. Now, the other thing I want to point out is you could also set up a filter that says that the tag is email and for example, maybe the group would say, scholarship or let's try this scholarship is not set and let's try another one how about service is not set and instead of and I'm gonna make it or so the tag is email where scholarship is not set or service is not set or because this is also a priority for me the class is not set so is not set and what this means is that I won't see this now because I set it so let me go back and show you if I go to this grouped by class and this particular um, pod example I sent earlier doesn't have the tag because I sent this before I created the automation, but I'm going to apply email now. And so it has the email tag. I'm also going to put this email tag on here too. Let me go back over to the tagging table view and notice I have a couple things now. Now this should not be showing. And this is one of the examples of, I mentioned earlier, ClickUp can act a little janky sometimes. If I hit command R, it should disappear. We'll see if it does. And it doesn't. So if I take a look at the filter, ah, I didn't keep the filter on. So let's try this again. Let's, I'm gonna add a group. So I'm gonna take that off, add a group, and I'm going to say where the class is not set, or it's going to be the scholarship is not set. And the final one is service, let's see, service 
is not set. So our tag is email or these things are not set. So I just have these two now and that's how it should be. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this view so that way it'll keep coming back for me. But if I go ahead and put, let's see class and this will be class one. Notice it doesn't disappear just yet. So I can go through and add some different things on here if I wanna go do that. Maybe I'll leave that one blank. Maybe this one will be class three and I will add this one as a research project. Now, let's see if I refresh it. None of these should show now, given the filter I have set up. We'll see if it works. It did. And again, the reason being is because I have this filter to say, only show me things that have the tag of email when all of these things, and actually um, this says and, but it should be an or. So if any of these are not set. Now, the reason I have it that way, and you could keep it the way I had it before, just and, um, is because I want to be able to see the different things that don't have anything at all. So if something is just simply not set across the board. So there's different ways you can tinker with the filter here, but this is how I like to do it. So then if I were to go back into my grouped by class view, notice that I don't see these down in empty anymore because I have put them into a particular class because the filter here states that, let's see, I don't have a filter set up, but I do have it grouped by class. And since I put a class next to each of those emails, that's why they now show up there. So hopefully you found this tip to be helpful for you. And this is something that you may want to try with your emails. And again, remember that you can email a list and something I didn't dive in today, you can also choose to email a task. And the process is really similar. You just go ahead and click on that particular task. You click on the three dot menu and you can choose to send email to the task. And that email will have a unique email address as well. Have you tried sending any emails to click up yet? I'd love to hear what your experiences are, especially if you've tried the automation feature too. Let me know what's working for you and what's not by posting a comment below. Did you like this video? Did you find it to be useful for you? If so, let me know. Subscribe to my channel, give this video a like, and please leave a comment. I read and reply to every single one of them and I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching.